हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिसऑर्डर ऑफ द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम दैट इज अवर सी ओ पी डी विच मीन्स क्रोनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव पलमनरी डिजीज एंड वी शुड ऑल्सो नो दैट सी ओ पी डी जनरली कवर्स टू डिसऑर्डर्स फर्स्ट इज आवर क्रोनिक विच मीन्स फॉर मिनिमम थ्री मंथस क्रोनिक ब्रोंकाइटस फर्स्ट इज क्रोनिक ब्रोंकाइटस एंड आवर सेकेंड डिसऑर्डर दैट इट कवर्स इज इम्फाइसिमा सो वी विल डिस्कस बोथ ऑफ दीज डिसऑर्डर दैट जनरली को एग्जिस्ट टूगेदर to make copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and when it comes to first part chronic bronchitis generally what it means to have chronic bronchitis it is first of all marked by excessive mucus production please note it down excessive mucus production yes and decreased Uh, we can say cilia decreased cilia motility and also there is we can say obstruction there is obstruction due to mucus production plus our phalum phalum okay so now we will discuss this on this diagram that there are present our bronchi bronchi bronchioles in our bronchioles which are making airways bronchioles are making airways and these airways are having lumen mucosa submucosa part smooth muscle layer we already discussed that part in the anatomy and physiology part so let's assume that this tube is like a our bronchi or bronchiole this is a tube like structure okay which is having smooth muscle layer goblet cells which produce mucus so for so many risk factors or so many causes such as first of all you should know that it is generally occurring due to in the 95% cases due to smoking smoking can be there exposure to dust can be there exposure to silica can be there and along with the forest fires vehicle pollution air pollution passive smoking can also lead to we can say chronic bronchitis and uh, uh, we can say the people who are living in industrial uh, areas industrial uh, societies are more uh, vulnerable for chronic bronchitis in this condition the cilia present on the goblet cell first of all their size or their length decreases their size or length decreases which leads to less motility and when there is less motility of the cilia the sputum is not able to be carried for example this is trachea bronchioles airways and this is the cilia present on the simple columnar epithelium it is having less motility so sputum or mucus or dust trapped here will not be able to go upward towards the esophagus for spitting out or for exit or for exit because of poor we can say cilia motility uh, the cilia is less mobile okay so now our goblet cells due to consistent irritation are producing excessive mucus inside the lumen excessive mucus inside the lumen and what is the diameter what is the diameter of the bronchioles or our airways it is merely only 6 0.6 cm very very less a uh, diameter of the lumen is there that is why it gets easily obstructed along with there is another problem the cells that make the lumen or the mucus membrane show hypertrophy show hypertrophy as you know that hypertrophy is increased size and hyperplasia and show hyperplasia increase in the number 
increase in the number cilia got had got damaged accumulation of sputum there is accumulation of we can say dust particles hypertrophy hyperplasia is also occurring over there and we know that our airways are taking in what are they taking in they are taking oxygen in and sending out co2 if there is obstruction if there is obstruction can oxygen come in no so there will be less gas exchange less gas exchange will be there and when co2 is not able to go out it will get accumulated in the alveoli that is called air trapping that is called air trapping all right so co2 over here will make lactic acid lactic acid and there are you know what there are chances of that is chances of infection over there infection over there because of presence of mucus dust particles and this infection is generally caused by hemophilus influenza or generally influenza pneumonia can there lobar pneumonia can be there can also occur over here so in the chronic bronchitis there is excessive mucus production excessive that is we can say damage to the goblet cells cilia mobility is decreased co2 had got accumulated inside the cells and there is we can say accumulation of lactic acid all this causes overall obstruction so whenever there is accumulation of co2 it causes hypercapnia hypercapnia first is hypercapnia then is hypoxemia hypoxemia can also be present over there and hyperemia hyperemia means increased in blood circulation to a particular area so till now we had damaged our bronchi its layers cilia etc etc now our target is on the next part that is emphysema what is emphysema so before we discuss emphysema before we discuss emphysema we should focus on the recoiling capacity of the alveoli that alveoli are able to recoil when we breathe in they expand and contract expand and contract recoil recoiling uh, their nature why the alveoli are able to recoil because on the on the surface of each alveoli there is a connective tissue layer present known as that is known as elastin that is known as elastin remember from the word elasticity that it is elastin so our liver our liver is making alpha 1 trypsinogen alpha 1 trypsinogen which protect this elastin layer which protect this elastin layer from neutrophils basophils eosinophils you know what whenever there is emphysema whenever there is copd whenever there is chronic bronchitis there is accumulation of dust particles there is accumulation of silica and other bacteria over there so our uh, that is immune system will get activated neutrophils will reach over there basophils will reach over there and cause inflammation by releasing cytokines so this layer is very delicate and is protected by alpha 1 trypsinogen alpha 1 trypsinogen it is uh, kindly note it is inhibitor of inhibitor of neutrophil elastase it is inhibitor of neutrophil elastase neutrophil elastase right what is as it is a basically proteases which eat up or digest the tissues all right so in emphysema there or there is less production of less production of alpha 1 trypsinogen kindly also note that the patients with liver damage are also at risk for our this condition this condition alpha 1 trypsinogen deficiency there uh, uh, will uh, there be elasticity no there will be no elasticity will the alveoli will be able to recoil 
or go back uh, uh, in front and forth no they will not be able to recoil elasticity will be lost and there causes inflammation there causes inflammation with the presence of yes please wheezing sound in uh, emphysema wheezing sound wheezing sound uh, the patient makes purse like uh, open purse like lips and breathe like this like this wheezing sound will be there loss of elastin is there and also this can cause that is the air trapping along with the collapse which is a very very serious problem collapse again the co2 will not be able to go out due to collapsing of the alveoli and alveoli show permanent permanent expansion can show permanent expansion and cause hyperinflation they make pocket like structures they make expanded structures pocket like structures let's assume that this is our normal we can say uh, alveoli and this is normal alveoli this is abnormal alveoli pocket like structures pocket like structures and when we talk about pocket like structures pocket like structures they can occur anywhere in the lungs anywhere in the lungs but generally but generally they can occur in the upper area near the bronchioles in the upper area first part this is known as please note it down this is known as centri centri snr centri snr pocket formation centri snr we can say our that is emphysema centri snr emphysema in the second it can occur over here it can occur in the middle portion it is known as pan snr it is known as pan snr pan snr emphysema okay again when the pocket formation is present when the pocket formation is present all over the visceral and the parietal pleura all over the lungs it is known as or can uh, make blebs can make blebs which can rupture or cause bleeding accumulation of pus it can cause pneumothorax pneumothorax or pneumonia pneumothorax can also be there so till now we had covered so much uh, part of the our topic that is copd which generally covers uh, we can say emphysema and chronic bronchitis for more than three months so what can be the complications what can be the complications so whenever whenever around a alveoli this is a alveoli and around it our pulmonary we can say vein pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein pulmonary artery branch is coming over here and whenever there is less oxygen there is less oxygen there is less perfusion of the okay this is blue color this is there is less perfusion of oxygen over here because oxygen is not coming due to the we can say chronic bronchitis pocket formation okay so there will be less oxygen perfusion and uh, uh, due to this our pulmonary artery branch pulmonary artery branch can show vasoconstriction can show vasoconstriction right vasoconstriction can show vasoconstriction it is known as hypoxemic vasoconstriction hypoxemic vasoconstriction all right done boom okay so this is not going to happen in just one pulmonary artery there are near about 1.5 crore 1.5 crore alveoli in the lungs so all, all all the pulmonary artery branches will get vasoconstriction show vasoconstriction so from where the blood is coming in these branches it is coming from the right ventricle of the heart right ventricle of the heart this area this area my dear students so this is happening in the lungs our mini lungs this are mini lungs okay so there is backflow of the blood backflow of the blood in the in the right ventricle in the right ventricle and right ventricle will pump more and more 
to send this blood for gas exchange but poorly unfortunately gas exchange is not occurring so due to over exertion due to over functioning left ventricle will get show or show uh, right uh, sorry right ventricle will show right ventricular failure oh my god right ventricular failure so blood is pumping over here from here it will go to that is right atrium and from inferior vena cava superior vena cava back flow will be there superior vena cava inferior vena cava whenever there is back flow of blood in the superior vena cava it show jugular vein distension jugular vein distension will be present over here jugular vein distension will be present over here it can be checked by eco test ecg ecg eco and one of the gold standard one of the go gold standard is uh, we can say swan gange swan please note this word swan gange swan gange catheterization it check the or read the pressure in the right ventricle and it should not be more than 18 mg 18 mm per hg i thought mg it is 18 mm per hg or mercury 18 mm swan gang catheterization catheter is uh, put into the right ventricle and to check the right ventricular pressure and backflow so what did we uh, learn till now we learn a lot of things that affect emphysema that causes emphysema that causes chronic bronchitis and what are the various complications that are associated with our uh, copd emphysema and chronic bronchitis so uh, other test can be chest x-ray other test can be chest x-ray chest x-ray to check any um, right ventricular enlargement chest x-ray can be there or you know what abg abg arterial blood gas can be there abg and uh, we can also do eco test alpha 1 trypsinogen assay alpha 1 trypsinogen assay test can also be done so till now we discussed a lot of things about the copd and now we are going to discuss about the treatment and the our nursing diagnosis in the end so stay tuned and watch this video till end so when we talk about the treatment of the copd it generally focus on these aspects first is that avoid smoking as i had already told that 95 percent cases of copd are associated with smoking in especially in foreign countries western countries hookah is there bd is there cigarette is there and tobacco is there so this can be avoid avoided by the individuals to get rid of copd and special focus is also on the bronchodilators which include mdi and dpi so dpi are generally dry powder our dry powder that is inhalers and metered dose inhalers dry powder inhalers and metered dose inhalers like max air and foradil Foradil is also short acting beta adrenergic we can say drug which opens up the bronchospasm bronchospasm both these are used for bronchospasm as you might have seen people with inhalers or uh, for metered dose inhaler dry powder inhaler so drug is max air kindly note and foradil uh, then is the short acting beta adrenergic drugs fourth is inhaled corticosteroids like hydrocortisone 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 so deficiency of cortisol or prepared from the cortisol hydrocortisone should be there remembered anti-inflammatory uh, aminophilin aminophilin is there aminophilin drug is dairyphilin aminophilin antibiotics for any infection present over due to h influenza or any respiratory disorder pneumococcal vaccine for the that is our pneumonia so these are the treatment modalities which should be kept in mind while dealing with the patient of copd emphysema and our 
chronic bronchitis in which cough is persistently present along with phelum with for more than three months or minimum three months along with all the tests that are indicating positive report so now we will focus on nursing diagnosis so when we talk about our nursing diagnosis it generally covers ineffective breathing pattern so in order to improve the breathing pattern of the patient we will administer saturated oxygen along with improvement of educating the uh, uh, patient regarding different active and passive exercises reduction of physical activity and how to avoid anxiety and depression associated with altered breathing pattern then the focus will be on poor airway clearance so educate the patient to avoid all the risk factors that he or she is exposed to dust irritants uh, that is we can say smoking uh, air pollution etc and always keep the uh, bronchodilators handy with him so that he or she can use the bronchodilators immediately in case of any complication obvious 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 risk of infection risk for infection is also over there and it can be tackled by use of broad spectrum antibiotics especially for uh, treatment of lobar pneumonia and in the last impaired gas exchange is there so the nurse will educate the patient about abg regular abg change in any sputum change in any structure of sputum for any infection regular active and passive exercise how to de decrease the physical activity so the student should always write the nursing management by keeping in mind about the sign and symptoms about the that is risk factors and the treatment involved do not just write the same things for the respiratory system over and again and expect good percentage or good marks so this was all about the our uh, topic that is copd which covered definition sign and symptoms diagnostic test uh, and its nursing management along with the treatment i hope this video might had proved useful for your nclex rn short review plus along with the diagrammatic representation of the disease for the first time for the nursing student especially thank you for watching this video don't forget to press the subscribe button and the like button